Hey, welcome back, everybody. More Age of Empires for you. This is the last placement match. So after this match, I officially get my rank. Uh, the skill level of my opponents has been bouncing around. Hopefully it's settling into the right spot. And I'm hoping that this match will be particularly exciting. The map is High View. And on high view, I like to play as the French. I rarely pull this civilization out. I mean, usually I'm doing Abbasid and uh, English. Usually I do Abbasid for landlocked maps and English for uh, hybrid water maps. But uh, for high view, I like to go French, mostly because there's a lot of these stealth forests. And it's really easy to hide your royal knights in the... Uh, the stealth forests and just kind of do hit and run tactics on your enemy. It's going to be me as the French up against Leia Marx uh, playing as the Mongols. And here's an annoying thing the Mongols do they'll send their Khan in to harass your villagers. Don't panic, just swap a villager out, put that villager on the sheep, and swap in a new villager onto your gold. Nothing too scary there. We're using two scouts because we, re I mean, we really need to find out if it's going to be a uh, spearman rush or a tower rush. Like we, we really want to be careful about what might be heading our way from a Mongol player. So we're really trying to find the Ovu, find out what's going on, and here we find it. It's actually an Ovu next to two pastures and a uh, town center. So this is a very uh, macro-oriented Mongol build here. Uh, my opponent could probably produce double uh, villagers. Okay, we're seeing a Gur starting on this gold vein. This is probably going to be my target when I send in my royal knights. And we're getting our school of cavalry up, and we're going to be producing some royal knights from here, and we're not going to go too hard on the royal knights. We really just need a few to harass, and then we'll maybe mix in some scouts and some horsemen to uh, harass, scout, and we're going to go professional scouts to gather up uh, the deer on the map. So I'm getting my scout into position. I really want to see what's going on. This is a great spot. This stealth forest is giving me good vision of the Ovu. We can see exactly what's coming out from my opponent. More harassment from the Khan. That's okay. We're not too worried about it. Although he is sending in another scout, so that's going to be annoying. It's going to overwhelm my scout with numbers. This is probably when I should get out, because my scout's going to be low on health. And now he's harassing my villagers, but it's not too much damage, and hopefully we can cycle out the injured, uh, the injured villager. Oh, kind of a glitched out villager there. I lose a villager, but... On the other side, we're getting a villager as well, so kind of an even trade there. Opponent goes up to the feudal age, and we're just kind of patrolling around trying to find more things to kill. My scout over here is noticing a barracks and a stables. We're going to drop down an archery range. Ideally, we would have gone um, a barracks ourselves just to deal with the horseman that he's going to be sending out. And you'll see we've prevented him from going for the uh, the gold. So he, he cannot collect any more, but he's going to start pumping out, yeah, double spearmen, being very annoying. And of course his con is just annoying the heck out of my villagers. But we're going to burn down the Gur with our royal knights. Might as well keep them busy doing something. And we're not spamming too much with the royal knights. We're just getting a few. And you can see we're, we're increasing our scout numbers, so we're up to three, four, if you count this one up here. He's sending his spearmen up to deal with my royal knights. So I'm going to pull the royal knights and at the same time send in these units to take out a low villager. So that's another villager kill. That was pretty good there. And then we're just going to run from these spearmen. So good kills there. And we're starting to gather up stone. We're house blocked, which is a real problem. We really need to get a house down. Okay, there it is. That's unfortunate that we were house blocked for so long because we're, we're really trying to get these villagers going. That said, we are getting the professional scouts. That's coming along. 
and we're just gonna go back to work on the gur. Oh, but here come the spearmen. We should probably get the heck out of here. Oh, tell me I pull these. Okay, good, I pulled them back. And with so many injured um, royal knights on the field, I'd love to see myself get chivalry as a, uh, a tech soon. I'm gonna pull these units back. They got a little injured. We're not doing too much. He's produced a lot of spearmen. I really need my archers to get involved. And I'm gonna send all my villagers who were working on sheep over to wood. We have enough food, and if we need to, we can just start gathering from these berries. Plus, we've got our scouts gathering up deer. So we're gonna bring them back home and we'll have plenty of food to, uh, to gather from. He's actually uh, gathering up some horsemen down south here. My scout was able to uh, spot them, about five of them. Now my royal knights can do pretty good work against these horsemen. We just don't want to lose them in the stealth forest yet. And I'm actually positioning my units. We're getting ready for the attack. Got my archers ready to go. We're not too worried. If he wants to fight my archers, go for it. My royal knights are going to be there to defend as well. So we're just kind of chasing these horsemen away. Would really like to see the chivalry upgrade come through. Hopefully that's coming up soon. But really we're excited because we've just hit 400 food. We've just hit... Oh, we found his Khan. Goodbye, Khan. But we've got enough for our second town center, so we're tossing that down. Also getting down a barracks. I'm trying to be really careful about getting military production buildings. I don't want to fall behind in military production buildings. That's kind of been the bane of my existence, so I really want to get that done. And Okay, there comes the chivalry. Oh, don't want to lose this scout to these horsemen. I should really send my, uh, there, my army right there to engage. Looks like, oh no, keep running, scout. Why fight? Oh, what a fool. But that's okay. We can still, we have plenty of scouts so we can keep ferrying the, uh, the carcasses back and forth. Wise of my opponent to put these uh, horsemen down here. He knew that the hunts were here. I think he recognized that I was going for uh, professional scouts. He's charging in on my gold line. I lose a villager, but now my royal knights can respond and they can duke it out with these uh, horsemen. Yeah, they already take one out. And we're beginning to gather from uh, the uh, deer carcasses. We're getting a lot of lumber. We really don't need this many on lumber. I should see a large chunk of these villagers being moved over. Ooh, nice. We're still dealing with the horsemen down here. Looks like I'm sending my forces wherever I send my scouts because I know that they're going to be exposed carrying these corpses back or the carcasses. Would really like to see me scout a little more. I'd like to see what's going on in here. It's looking like a pretty passive build. Lots of um, lots of pastures. But we are also starting to see towers going up. Ooh, he's trying to harass, but I wisely put some hardened spearmen. Just got the upgrade over here. So if he wants to kill my villagers, go for it. He's just going to lose a lot of his horsemen in the process. Looks like he gets one villager there. That's okay. We're getting down more military structures. That's what our extra lumber's going towards. Really happy about that. And I really wanna see a good chunk of these villagers being sent over to either these uh, deer carcasses or these berries because I really need to be getting food. Really wanna be going to the next age. Still duking it out with his horsemen. The archers and my horsemen aren't too effective against them. I mean, really spearmen are what you want, but these royal knights, they just do such good damage. They can tank all the hits. They can deal with all of the horsemen. Yeah, that's that's a good fight right there. And right as we clear those horsemen out, we go to gather more, more deer. So that's great. This deer will really be my ticket to the uh, next stage. My... Royal Knights are healing up because of that chivalry upgrade. I think these were the two very injured Royal Knights who were originally harassing my opponent at this gold. So it's good to see them still up, still in action, and hopefully we'll be using them to harass my opponent here in a moment. Sending them in, let's see what we can find. I suspect there will be villagers here, but boom, we find 
A bunch of villagers making the step redoubt. Losing villagers here to his horsemen. Unfortunate. I mean, my spearmen are right here. Looks like I'm going to lose maybe two or three villagers there. We're kind of doing battle with his Khan. Moving back and forth, trying to get villager kills on the step redoubt. Yeah, you can see these villagers just keep bouncing back and forth. My royal knights can hang out here for a while. We can really delay this. It's not like these uh, outposts are doing too much with their arrows, but we're going to back off. We deal with the horsemen, probably lose one or two villagers, just like how he lost maybe one or two up here. Now we finally get the food to go to the next age. I wonder if I spent... I might have bought a little bit of food. I had a lot of gold left over. Opponent makes it to the castle age. We knew that was coming. The step redoubt was, uh, was almost done. I'm sending in my knights. Trying to get some charge attacks off. Oh, we get one right as it goes into the tower. I mean, this is okay. I'd love to see him respond with spearmen. That's what we really want to see. With my scout over here giving good vision. Oh, actually, no, it's just a knight. There's the scout. These two can just deal. Oh, there's the spearmen coming. Now we need to get out. Would really like to see me run from these spearmen, but I think I forgot about these knights. Yep, they're all just going to be poked down by the spearmen. That said, I'm up to my next age, and just from seeing his uh, his military production here, I saw a lot of barracks, and I've seen a, um, a stables, so I'm gonna try and get down some more archery ranges. Looks like one, two more archery ranges, and a barracks of my own. I do find a few of his troops out on the map. I was just kind of patrolling these units around, and I think I was having them stick to this relic, just so that we could prevent my opponent from from grabbing them and starting to win the uh, religious game. Oh, there goes a scout. And we're seeing lots of outposts. My opponent's going to know when I move out on the map. That's going to be very difficult. Okay, nice. More deer coming back home. Would love to see a blacksmith. Two blacksmiths being put down here would be really good. Uh, we get free attack upgrades. Um, looks like on my guild hall I've switched it over to gold. That's good. We're going to passively gather up gold and later on we're going to start taking from the guild hall i know that in this game i was pulling a lot of gold from my guild hall it was almost constant i probably shouldn't have pulled so much but i went for it my military productions i like seeing what's in the queue lots of crossbowmen a uh, few spearmen we're gathering up an army. It's going to be pretty ranged focused because I'm seeing lots of stuff in his barracks. And with our excess lumber, we could get down a monastery and a siege workshop. We're seeing his con moving around the map. I'm going to keep some royal knights active, but I'm running into an issue where I just don't have... I don't really have enough... Um, food production. I'm trying to put in uh, farms. That's good. And we get horticulture, so we're gathering quicker. But really, we need another food source. We've pretty much taken care of the deer. There is this berry bush down here, which I'd like to see me take advantage of. Other food sources are this berry bush out here, and then the boars here and here. If I don't go for those sort of external uh, food spots, then I'm going to have to gather up a lot of wood. A lot of wood to put down farms. I'm sending my gold mining operation up here for this gold vein. We've got our monastery. We've got some excess gold, so I'd love to see me get uh, love to see me get some monks and start uh, grabbing up relics. I'm also seeing lancers coming from my opponent. He wisely retreats his villagers, but that's a, that's a little bit of time where his villagers aren't gathering gold. We find the ovu, and actually we steal some deer from up here because I thought, why not? We'll use our we'll use our scouts no matter what. I send them on a very long path home, but hopefully they make it back. 
sending these villagers down to gather more food. We just need to keep our food uh, income up because that's how we're gonna make our army. Fortunately, we've also gathered 900 stone, so we can put down a keep, and that can defend some of these farmlands. I believe I do that in a little bit here. I think I get a uh, keep somewhere in this area to try and protect sort of the backside of my base. And we're moving with my army across the map because I want to tear down some of these outposts. I get one right there. You can see, here's another one, and we're finding some of his troops here. We're gonna clean them up. It's great having all the arbolatriers. You can see we're, we're taking out units before they even engage. Though it's because he sent a large force this way. Oh, there's even more. I'm wise enough to pull my villagers away, although these five in the, uh, the tower aren't gonna aren't going to make it out. Trying to send in my horsemen, but they don't seem like a very strong force to send in. I mean, these spearmen are engaging with them, and it's not looking good. I really need to get these horsemen out. You can see how little damage they were able to do against these highly armored units. What I need are these arbolatriers back home. Some harassment down here, but it's just the con. We're going to put up an outpost and then hopefully get mining. Unfortunately, the very long path that my scouts took is walking right past his army. And so I lose all of those deer that I was hauling home right there. But I've got my arbolatriers forward. They're working on all of these uh, man-at-arms and we're putting down the pavise shields. So we're going to be very tanky against all of these attacks. You can see we're tanking a lot of damage and we're just shooting away. That's all we can really hope to do. One of my monks that I sent out actually gathered up this relic, and we're gonna try to combine a charge with this conversion, see if we can um, convert his units. And this is very interesting. He pulls his units away accidentally, and then as he kills my monk, his units get converted. And so, there's tons of glitches going on. These guys are throwing torches at my unit. They've turned white because they're now no longer part of an army. This guy's somehow still able to target that one. And then the relic's just sitting right there. So these neutral units just hang out here. They're deserters. They just decided the battle wasn't worth it anymore. It was a very, very strange thing to witness. I don't know what these units could have really done. I mean, if let's say he killed my monk and the conversion didn't go off, I feel like he would have ran into a lot of resistance near this keep, and I was gathering up more units. But man, what a weird interaction that was. So yeah, these units are just gonna hang out here doing nothing. I think of it as a great opportunity for me to just continue to make units, so I'm going to keep making villagers, I'm going to keep making horsemen. Let's check my guild hall, lots of money available. That's good, love seeing that. And we're moving on to these berries up here. As you can see, we're really trying to gather up all the food sources we can before we make the full transition over to farms. Because, yeah, I really don't want to transition. It's just so expensive. Although, we've, we've done a decent job down here. So now there's not much going on. Uh, it's mostly me trying to gather up relics again. I believe I've got more monks being produced. This one is just kind of hanging out near my base. Though, I'd like to grab this one as well, since it's in the center. Love this scout being here. Great having a scout near the center of the map, especially near his outposts here. My knights up here actually found a good deal of uh, villagers and a monk or a shaman that was trying to grab this relic. We killed the shaman, killed a few villagers, and then he sent his army and we get a nice preview of what he's got. Looks like a lot of horsemen and some infantry. So we're definitely going to want to get more spearmen. You can see I actually have a little bit of spearmen mixed in with my army, so that's good. And now we're going to just try and burn down as many of these outposts as we can. 
it sucks uh, exposing my units like this. Well, now we're gonna engage. It's a lot of cavalry, but this feels pretty good. Oh, but there's a mangonel in the back, and here come more of his infantry. The infantry are the real issue. Arbalatriers are still working, but he just has the numbers. He's just got too much infantry right now. If we look at current resources, he's got a lot of food, so he could produce even more units. Me, I'm having a lot of food issues. Oof. So I'm seeing his units. Again, it's horsemen and infantry, lots of melee units. I'm not seeing many archers, so... Um, defenses are gonna be good, but we did see a mangonel in his forces as well. Okay, good. We grabbed the relic up there, so now we're tossing that in. Let's see if we've pulled from the guild hall. We have pulled from the guild hall. With all of that gold, I'm not sure what we've done. I think we probably spent it on units. That and probably upgrades, because now our, we've gotten our two blacksmiths and we're chugging along on upgrades, so that's good. Down here, we're still mining. We've got a small force of units guarding it. But we're kind of waiting for that big army cluster to come. I want this. Okay. That monk can't quite make it back. Hopefully the next one has better luck bringing that relic home. Send my units out, but then we encounter some resistance. It's the Khan and that army that we saw earlier. They're likely going to attack this position. I'd like to get a Spring Alden placement here, and I'd like to pull these villagers away, preferably down to this wood line because we're gonna see a lot of action right here. And I'd like to start rallying units further back in my base. No point in engaging while he has the advantage of the uh, uh, stealth forest. We're gonna pull back, now we're gonna fight. I'm retreating my villagers, trying to get them anywhere safe. And we're duking it out. Let's check out upgrades. Um, my opponent has decent upgrades. Same with me. Honestly, he might be ahead. It's looking like uh, plus two and plus one. I'm doing a conversion, so he has to pull his units back. Meanwhile, my units are attacking. And then I can send another monk forward. So this monk's going to try and run this relic back home. He gets it in. This one's going to do another conversion. I'm mostly just trying to bait him in. And while that's happening, the castle is firing and this town center filled with units is firing. And I'm gonna send my royal knights to the back to burn down his uh, mangonels. He's still sitting on just tons of infantry, which is good. I mean, we can zone him with the monk, so that feels very good. Um, we're losing a lot of villagers here. This monk is trying to make a desperate play to grab this relic, but his units are, have kind of spread out and we're using, our, uh, we're using our cavalry to destroy the Traction Trebuchet, which I think is attacking maybe the keep? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's going for the keep, but it's not very effective at it. I'm rallying units back here near my uh, town hall, and yes, the keep is doing good work. I didn't realize it was attacking these units on the side. Lots of my units are idle, but I'm trying to find ways of keeping him busy while engaging in my base. If he has reinforcements, we're going to kill them with my royal knights. Although he's now producing many spearmen, and they're going to counter my royal knights. But this is a good way to keep him from sending backup. And finally, a spring all pops out of my siege workshop, and we're able to take down the traction trebuchet. Meanwhile, the pacifists, they're just chilling. They don't care about this fight. These Mongol soldiers, they're done. They've seen war's horrors, and they're done with it. See, my opponent's actually making an outpost here with a spring all emplacement. Very dangerous. He's sending horsemen into my base to kill these villagers. Oh, I wish I saw these horsemen. I don't know why I haven't responded to them. Losing so many villagers here. Three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, they do so much damage. Yeah, losing villagers up here as well but I have to defend my mangonel more than anything. So I'm gonna keep my troops near my mangonel because it's at least gonna be dealing damage to these units. 
After he massacres these villagers, it looks like, uh, oh wow, he's still going after him. But we have cleaned up his troops. And we are using our mangonel to tear down some of these outposts. The horsemen are still looking for more kills, but fortunately the royal knights are here to clean them up. But you can see if we check out income, he's ahead in nearly everything except stone. And very much so in wood, because I've lost so many villagers that were chopping. But fortunately we're, we're making more, and it is the castle age. Uh, as the French, we produce villagers faster and faster as we age up. So it's good that we're at least this advanced because we can produce a lot of villagers very quickly. I'm getting really annoyed with these uh, outposts. This one's very annoying. This one's already destroyed my mangonel. Really need these troops to burn down these outposts or just build a ram. Problem is, I still don't have siege engineering. We really need to research that. I'm getting a veterancy for my spearman because I've noticed him mixing in a lot of cavalry. We're going into his base because we need to find his economy. We haven't really done much damage to his economy, so we're doing what we can. I pulled from the guild hall. That's why we're so wealthy on gold, and our gold mining was not disrupted during all of that. We've just been mining from this gold vein down here and slowly building a giant border wall to protect this area. Finally, we find where some villagers were working, and he has to pack things up. So that's good. We're finally on the offensive again. I'm going to pull my royal knights away because they're just not very effective against uh, all of his uh, spearmen. And then, then we find the Khan, and we're just going to take him out. Whenever we find the Khan, we're going to kill him. We're going to target him. We're duking it out with his infantry again, and every time I have ranged units involved, it's a big advantage for me. He still has yet to make ranged units. Haven't seen any archery ranges or archers or anything from him. So we're scoring big points here. This is a great engagement. You can see my spearmen are taking out cavalry and my uh, archers and arbalatriers are getting shots in. He sends a small force to attack my gold mine. Fortunately, it's already mined out. Over here, we're trying to deal with these outposts. Hopefully I can use the mangonel, and I bite the bullet on going to Imperial. I just buy up a whole bunch of food, because I just had so much gold from my guild hall. So I just purchased a bunch of gold, very expensive, and now we're getting down our College of Artillery. And I really want that because I'm so sick of these outposts, and cannons are going to be a real permanent solution to taking them out. You'll see how frustrated I am with them in a moment. Clearing out his forces here. That's good. I liked his small attacking force. That was a smart move. But you're going to see how sick I am of these outposts. Oh, this spring all. Yeah, let's send him forward. See if we can't take out his. I actually sent just a horde of villagers to take out this outpost. Because I'm sick of it. And it's been blocking me from chopping these trees. So we're just going to burn it down and build a lumber camp. And you can see the map is dotted with these outposts. They're all over the place. There's really just no safe place to go. He's going to see wherever I go. Though, while he has been containing me, he has not really done anything about this section of the map, where it's very juicy. Three gold veins right here. This is going to be important as the game goes on. Oh, he's sending a large force of uh, horsemen and man-at-arms. We're going to defend with our own cavalry. We've also got a mangonel on the back lines. Some spring alls in case he brings anything forward. Looks like this monk is being very brave. We were able to retreat all of our villagers out, and with my unit production, I'm not too scared. We're also going to have some villagers put down a keep over here. His horsemen are targeting down my spring alls, which so be it. Now he sees a cannon, so he's going to go for that. But my forces are still engaging with his. He can try to snipe down all the siege he wants, but he's ignoring my infantry and cavalry and 
it's going to cost him all his units. I think once this keep goes down, we'll be in a better position. I like it on the front lines. But really, I'm super happy that this is going up all while that's going on. I like the changes to stone walls. It's taking forever to get these walls up, but I think that that's fair. Once we get all that gold secured, we can really enter the late game against my opponent. Now that I'm an Imperial and he isn't, we're making cannons. And we're gonna tear down every single one of these outposts. And we're gonna neutralize this sacred site. In terms of the religious game, he's currently sitting on one sacred site, an unknown number of relics. I have three relics. I don't see any on the map, so he has two. He has two relics. I have three, but he also has a sacred site. Fortunately, we're neutralizing it. So gold income, I mean, it's hard to fight the step redoubt, but we're trying to stay even. He's a little bit ahead in income, and we're really getting up there. We're continuing to make villagers. We're at 85. We'd like to see more come out. And now that we're at the Imperial Age, we can get more and more economic upgrades. I mean, we could get tithe barns. We could get all sorts of stuff. But, I mean, the real... The real star of this age is the cannon. So hopefully my, yeah, my College of Artillery is producing royal cannons now. We're also able to get some uh, hand cannoneers. These are very effective against infantry. So we're gonna try and keep them alive, combine them with uh, cavalry and uh, other units to keep them safe and tank for them. And we'll be able to take on whatever army he's got. You can see he really just went for barracks and stables. And he's still producing barracks. I think it's because he's just floating so many resources. You can see he's really high up there on food, wood, and gold. Me, I'm spending, spending, spending as much as I can. Nice. The hand cannoneers are doing work. And now the royal cannon's out, and it's gonna start firing at whatever they see. We've also got our siege engineering, so we're getting a battering ram down. In terms of our economy, we've added on more farms, so now we've actually got a pretty sustainable food source. Yeah, even more over here. Some unworked farms, even. Lumber we're collecting here under the keep, that's good. And gold we're collecting behind these stone walls, feeling very safe there. So there you have it. That's all three of the most important uh, resources being safely gathered in the late game. So. I'm really feeling good about that. And now my opponent had to retreat with all those barracks. We're gonna still come forward and tear down all the outposts. He can't pack those up and move them. We've neutralized the sacred site. We're gonna park our units on important uh, resource locations. So you can see right here, we're trying to watch over these. We assume that our opponent's safely taken all of this up here and is probably taking care of all this. There's not much on the north end of the map, just a big chunk of stealth forests. So we're just going to park ourselves kind of on this right side of the map. And yeah, we're gonna put down an outpost and a lumber camp because we, we actually wanna chop down these trees here too. Also got a ram just moving around the map, taking out all of these outposts. Then I'll deny him vision and they're just pests. So let's get rid of them. In fact, I think this outpost is actually firing at my villagers down here. Yep. So this outpost needs to get cleared. We're bringing over the cannon to take care of it, and we're actually securing the sacred site in the center. Once the ram clears out these outposts, then hopefully we can move on to the others. Finally, it feels like we're in control. We're attacking his villagers. We're attacking his buildings. We're tearing everything down. I haven't seen his unit composition, but oh, here it is. More infantry and more cavalry. We just have not seen a military tech switch from him. And now that he's in the Imperial Age, I don't know what new unit he's really gonna send our way. It's not like he got access to hand cannoneers because he hasn't made any archery ranges. In terms of upgrades, looking good. We've got everything except these final two armor upgrades. And in the university, we're getting incendiary arrows. We'd also love to see royal bloodlines uh, mixed in there. 
and we're just not going infant we're not going as royal knight heavy as we used to because he's just been sending so many spearmen at us so we're trying to be light on the uh, cavalry production you can see there's way more just crossbows spearmen uh, archers just just a, a more of a infantry focused mix and when I do make uh, cavalry, I just kind of do a mix of veteran horsemen and royal knights because I, I don't need to go overboard. We find the Ovu. We're going to gun it down with our royal cannons. Here he's having to retreat his barracks because he's under attack again by this royal cannon. Taking out his market here. That's done for. And these range units are really going to be supported by this royal cannon. You can see that the infantry just can't even reach them. And when they run into a building, the cannon will help out. Those barracks are just kind of squirreling away. They're just running for it. Looks like I'm making a ram down here. We've got a cannon working away at whatever targets it can find. Nice. Let's get that stepper out. And we're expanding to all these other gold veins. So my gold income is amazing. Now we're ahead in the economic game. Sure, we're a little behind on food, but our gold is insane. We can make all of the expensive units we want. It looks like we actually destroyed a landmark. Yeah, it looks like we got the deer stones. Now we're moving on to his uh, town center. No, well, actually no. It my royal cannon just continues to attack the deer stones, but we'll eventually get there. There's those incendiary arrows being fired. Love seeing that. And we're, oh, we're just slaughtering villagers here. That's a lot of villagers. Oof. There goes the Khan. And I think my opponent is... I think my opponent's done for at this point. Makes a decent force down here, but again, it's just more of the same. Never really saw a unit transition from him. It was a really exciting match. I love how I was on the defensive for so long, but we held on. These keeps, in retrospect, I would have gotten these keeps up a lot quicker. They're just so good at defending your base, and sometimes all you need is to keep just kind of your central area alive so that you can put down farms, keep making villagers, keep producing units, basically not have things spiral out of control. Would have liked to see the blacksmiths come a little earlier too, and the transition to farms was clunky, but we got there eventually. Very happy with pulling uh, lots of materials from the guild hall. That was great. We were never low on gold. And I liked that I recognized the strategic opportunity of taking this section of the map. I think people don't really look ahead at what's going to be important later on in the match. Safe gold mining sources is just so important. There's very few civilizations out there that can just completely support themselves in gold without being on the map gathering it. Maybe the English a little bit or maybe a trading centric uh, civ, but it just doesn't work out. Would have loved to see my opponent make different units as the game went on. Instead, it was just more and more of the same. Ultimately, we persevered and uh, we won out. This was our final placement match and we ended up right in the middle of the uh, Gold League. So we're ranked two in the Gold League and uh, we're excited to start our ranked journey. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you for the next one.